Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So what do you do if you find out that a laptop you stole belongs to dangerous cyber criminals and now they're coming to kill you and all of your friends? That's what the characters in Unfriended Dark Web get into. And in this video, we'll look at how you can stop the killers and potentially make $10 million in the process. The movie begins with the startup of a MacBook. The login screen appears and somebody types in a bunch of guesses of common passwords, all of which are wrong. This lets us know that it's probably not the owner. After a short break, the cursor goes to the username, which is just an ominous question mark. Upon seeing this, the same thing is entered as the password which gets him in. Immediately, a few programs open, one of which is FaceTime, which starts the camera. This shows us who's on the computer, and it's Matthias in his apartment. He found the laptop sitting in a lost and found in a cafe and took it. And this is already a big mistake. Not that he stole the computer, we'll get to that. But the fact that he brings it right home is a bit problematic. Most of you probably know this, but MacBooks have the Find My Mac feature, which allows the owner to track their computer relatively easily from another Apple device. And this feature is pretty strong, as it seems that even after a normal factory reset, the computer is still capable of easily being traced. But it seems that if you really want to disable this feature on a stolen MacBook, at least at the time when the movie takes place, there were workarounds for that. He should look into clearing all the different types of memory, which would make it much like a brand new device and untraceable. Erasing all memory and resetting the computer would also stop Matthias from getting into any trouble, because it's really what he finds saved on the computer in the mysterious untitled folder that leads to things spiraling out of control but by deleting all files, he would get rid of that folder as well. So he goes into his Google Drive and downloads an app that he's working on. It recognizes words being said and translates them into sign language. On his Facebook page, we see that he has a deaf girlfriend named Amaya, which explains the app. He starts a video call with her where he demonstrates how it works, but it's clear that they're not really getting along so well as she would much rather have him learn ASL. And the fact that he logs into all of his social media accounts right away is a little bit dangerous, and he should be much more careful with his stolen computer. Matthias could, for example, easily use a VPN, which would already add several layers of protection. And don't worry, this is not a segue into a sponsorship where I tell you to buy one. But it is possible for hackers to get a lot of information, including names and addresses, over the internet. Especially when you're as careless as Matthias. It's also common for hackers to leave things like USB sticks out in public with the goal of people taking them and plugging it in, which allows them to get their information. So be careful with random bait technology you find in public. It's best if you just leave it. But by encrypting all the information that he sends over Wi-Fi, which as we've seen by now includes emails, passwords for those emails, Facebook and its passwords, and much more, he can already add a lot of security. Most VPNs are really easy to use. And this might seem a little too simplistic, and it could be, but the hackers that are shown in the end, they don't have every bleeding edge tool to break all encryption. Instead, they're merely preying on extremely careless people like Matthias, and he's making it very easy to track him by having no form of security. Like I said, if you set up all these stock Apple features like Find My Mac, you too could easily find him no matter how little you know about computers. So it's no challenge for the hackers. Shortly after, he hops on a Skype call with his friends. After some time, the computer crashes. It then reopens Safari and Matthias logs into the saved Facebook account, the one of the real owner. There he sees all the messages this guy named Nora C. The Fourth has been getting. And it's all from women who it looks like were promised a free vacation. Then he gets a couple of intrusive texts from someone named Erica Dunn. These are also to Nora. He closes Safari and rejoins the Skype session. There he messages Damon, someone who knows a little bit more about computers than him. He asks him how to fix the constant crashing. And Damon says that it's probably because the storage is full. Matthias then tries erasing the big drive on the desktop that's taking up almost a thousand gigabytes, but it won't allow him to just drag it into the trash. He quickly enters a few lines of code which should make it easier to delete. The desktop then restarts and we see that the folder is now unlocked. He looks around in it for a little and sees a bunch of really boring videos. Then he just goes back to the Skype call. Here it's pretty easy for him to avoid all the trouble that's coming later on. He can simply delete all the files that he unlocked which would speed up his computer, which I thought was the entire goal here. He is shortly interrupted by his friends, but it shouldn't be too difficult to just drag a folder into the trash, unless you have like short-term memory issues. And the contents are totally boring, so who cares? 
Back in the Skype call, we see that two of his friends are getting married. This makes him watch a video of him and Amaya when things were much better. He goes on another video call with her, but is interrupted by the mysterious Erica Dunn, writing things like, I know you're there and don't ignore me. Finally, Matthias responds, which is not a good idea. These messages, for all he knows, are not even meant for him, but for Nora C. So he could simply log out of the stranger's Facebook account and disable notifications. Now the password is saved, but Matthias can simply delete it from the computer. And since he has to reopen Facebook a bunch of times because the computer keeps crashing, it might not be a bad idea to forget the guy's password so it doesn't keep logging into the wrong account. This sounds very simple, but doing this could avoid the entire conflict. By the way, while he's getting the messages, he has a lot more time to delete the untitled folder, but still doesn't do it. So he asks Erica who she is and gets the message, I'm the person whose laptop you stole, I'm Nora C. After being called out for stealing it, Matthias gives up and says that he'll bring it back to where it was. And this would be a good decision. Unfortunately, he doesn't follow through on it. He prepares to shut the laptop off, but sees that another person sent Nora a message. It just says, I'll pay in advance for something special. This intrigues Matthias, and he wants to talk to him. Here we see how merely logging out of the stranger's Facebook account would already keep you safe. Matthias almost shuts off the laptop, which would end the whole thing. And right then, he gets some messages which keep him on longer. Matthias asks him what he wants, but only gets a message that they should talk on the river which is this really old chat room where there's a bunch of users named Sharon. Matthias asks Damon for some help, and he starts sharing a screen on the call. As the group watches what he does, Damon lets them know that this program is most likely used so that no one can track the users. AJ remarks that this is part of the darknet, where many spooky things happen. Confused about how he even got to this chat room, Lex, one of the girls, asks how he really got the laptop. He admits to stealing it and that the real owner is Nora C, which is just Sharon spelled backwards. And it's strange that Damon, the computer expert among them, isn't alarmed by the fact that Matthias took this random computer that was lying around in public. He must know what baiting is and should warn Matthias. Anyways, Matthias then begins showing the contents of the Untitled folder, and they all see the videos. Damon reveals that this is what's called wardrobing, which is when hackers pick up unsecured and vulnerable Wi-Fi signals, which can get them into a stranger's webcam. And something here should worry the others. They see that Nora C is committing crimes by hacking into people's computers, and the same guy is sending Matthias threatening messages. Yet they all still decide that it's a good idea to investigate further, and don't even consider the possibility that he might come after them, because they stole his laptop which has a bunch of incriminating evidence on it. At this point he should probably get rid of it, but he still just keeps scrolling through the videos. And maybe it's just me, but at this point I don't really understand why all of his friends want him to keep the laptop. I mean they're stealing from criminals. Then we finally get to the interesting part. Matthias opens a file which links to a blockchain website. There he finds a saved login to a crypto wallet and decides to check it out. In it, he sees 15,000 Bitcoin, which at the time is worth around $10 million. And of course, we need to find a way to take it. However, if you're in the same situation as Matthias, where the computer is already in your house, you have to leave it, since it's not unreasonable to assume that by now Nora C has his address, contact info, and social media passwords, and he'll probably want to come after the money. However, if Matthias opened the laptop not at his home and didn't log into all of his social media, it wouldn't matter if the hacker sees what he's doing. So if he were to access it in like a Starbucks, then he could dump all the Bitcoin into his account. But even though Bitcoin is relatively anonymous and doesn't require any verification to set up, it's still traceable. You can see to which wallet the Bitcoin went. Here is where you would have to use something called a Bitcoin mixer or blender. And this is just for entertainment purposes, and I don't recommend that you actually do this. So a blender is almost like a pool of cryptocurrency where you can put in your dirty stolen Bitcoin. These get mixed up with a bunch of other Bitcoins, and then you get a bunch of random Bitcoins out of the pool. These are clean and untraceable. This way Matthias wouldn't even need to steal the laptop. He sees the account, transfers the funds, makes it untraceable, and walks away a millionaire, leaving the hackers without any useful information. This would be the ultimate way to beat the movie. 
By the way, the crypto wallet for some reason doesn't have two-factor authentication, so with the saved password alone, he's able to clean out the entire account. Then Matthias gets more messages from Eric Haddam, or Nora C. He writes that he's at the location where Matthias said he'd bring the laptop and nothing's there. He decides to ignore the messages for now and suddenly AJ has a realization as to where to find some of the more interesting content in the Untitled folder. Of course, Matthias, led by his morbid curiosity, follows his instructions and sees a video of a girl being fed what looks like dog food. Then there's another one where a person is about to get a tub of acid poured on them and one final clip of a girl stuffed in a barrel. So I think most of us wouldn't want to be any part of this and instantly call the police or get rid of it. I mean, how does this enrich your life? You might be interested in the money, that's understandable, but not the videos. If one of my friends brought this laptop into my apartment, I'd be like, get that thing out of here. And as we'll discuss later, this would save all of our characters as it's really the videos that must get deleted for them to be safe. They should perhaps realize that they're messing around with a large criminal network. This is their last chance to walk away from it and not suffer any consequences. But of course, they don't do any of that and investigate further. They watch the last clip in the folder which is of a man breaking into a woman's bedroom. They figure out that she's probably the next victim and will be abducted. The girls convince them that they must do something and report it to the police. But seeing what these guys do, regardless of what the group wants to do next, they should not discuss it over Skype. They just saw that the hackers can crack unsecure Wi-Fi signals like Matthias's and steal people's personal information and look through their webcams, which all of them are using. Also, the titles of the videos show them that this is being done in the neighborhood where most of them live. No, wait, wait, look at those addresses. That's here, that's the ones on the east side. On top of that, one of the criminals is already talking to Matthias on the laptop that can easily be traced. Being just a little bit more careful here and talking on a phone rather than what would be a hacked webcam can really help out a lot. Especially for Matthias, since he's the one with the hacker's computer. So finally they decide to call the police, something they could have done like 20 minutes ago when that guy started asking for murder videos. But then Matthias mutes everybody and logs into his Facebook to go on a video call with his girlfriend. Yes, he's currently dealing with kidnappings, millions of stolen dollars, criminals threatening him and people demanding snuff films. Seems like the perfect time to fix a relationship. Everybody hold on, the missing girls have to wait because my girlfriend is texting me. Dude. Anyways, when he picks up, Amaya is still in the shower. Then a dark figure comes on screen and writes some messages to Matthias saying that he desperately wants his laptop back. And this is kind of a strange scene, because if the guy wants his laptop back, why does he go to Amaya? Wouldn't he go to the person who actually has his laptop? So the hacker shows Matthias his phone and it's revealed that he has remote access to his computer. He then tells him that he'll trade Amaya for the laptop. She can't know what's going on and must go to his apartment. Nora will trail her and when she arrives at his doorstep, Matthias will give him the laptop. But something doesn't add up here. The same guy who is so serious about his privacy that he hacks Amaya's camera lets Safari remember all of his passwords? The folder with the evidence was not even password protected and the login to the MacBook itself was so simple that Matthias could crack it in about a minute. None of this makes any sense. This could let Matthias know that these guys have to be messing with him, or they might just be the worst criminals in history. But what's most important to remember is that this guy can see Matthias' screen and he wrote that if any one of his friends leaves the Skype call or they call the police, they die. Back in their meeting, everyone is still really anxious. Nari tells them that he should go to the police with her, which can't happen. So he convinces them that it's sort of a real life game. And what he should do right now is rejoin the call from his phone. The computer hasn't done him any good, so just leave it. There are no rules that say that he can't. He even does this in the last 5 minutes I think, but why not just do it here? Then he mutes the call again and convinces Amaya to come to his apartment. He rejoins Skype and looks up the address from the last video. It belongs to Erica Dunn and she's really missing. He realizes that it's the same account messaging him on Facebook. Here Matthias makes a crucial mistake. We see that Lex gets a call from her mother and walks off, therefore leaving the call. This means that if she doesn't quickly return, she's going to be targeted by the hacker. It's what he wrote in the messages. It's not like Matthias doesn't take the rules seriously as he was freaking out when Damon wasn't there. No, 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 we, we, we need Damon. Damon! 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 
So if Matthias would have stopped looking up articles of Erika Dunn, which does nothing for him anyways, he could easily see Lex not in the room. And since everyone must remain on the call to live, it should be Matthias' top priority to get them all to stay. Damon then asks how he handles all the decisions, since there must be countless options for the players to make. And what would happen if, for example, they would steal all the money in the Bitcoin wallet? This gives Matthias an idea. He goes into the account and steals all the money and drops it into his own wallet, sort of as insurance to make sure that the hacker holds up his end of the deal. If everything goes well, he gets the money back. The hacker then calls him to have an honest talk about how stupid that decision was. And it was a pretty terrible idea, because Matthias has absolutely no leverage. Stealing the money makes no sense, because the criminals already know his location, name, and who his friends are. He just saw that they broke into Amaya's house, so they could probably go to any one of his friends or his house and kill him if he really wanted to. The plan is even more flawed because the hacker can see the email and password that he uses for his Bitcoin account, because the thing is set up on the MacBook. As we can see, he uses a suggested password that is plainly visible on the computer the same screen the hacker has remote access to, so the criminal can just go right into Matthias' wallet and take all the money back. Then Matthias is even more screwed than before. What makes this so painful is that this happens after Matthias has shown that the guy can see his screen. Transferring the money is one of two key mistakes along with keeping the videos. After taking all the money, he lets the hacker know that he'll only get it back when Erica Dunn, the kidnapped girl in the video, is safe. Why? Why does he care so much about a stranger? For all he knows, she's already dead. Is saving one person he doesn't know really worth the cost of his own life, and all of his friends, and Erica Dunn's, since the guy can just go back into the account and take back the money? Matthias really needs to think before he acts. Anyway, this is when everything goes from bad to worse. He goes back into the Skype call, and Nari questions if the game is real and it's clear that he's being very evasive and dodging the questions. After Nari gets even more suspicious, one of the Sharon users goes into their Skype call. Then a bunch more people join and a video link is posted into the chat. Without clicking on it, the clip starts playing. It's a photo montage of Lex and the Sharons getting her address following a video of her being thrown off a roof by a guy in a sweater apparently made of Christmas lights. This death, as we already talked about, was probably avoidable by simply keeping her on the call and there was a lot of time between her walking off and her being thrown off the roof. If Matthias would have paid more attention in the Skype call and not to his half-baked plan of stealing the money, he could have noticed pretty early that she's not there. Then Matthias sees that the hacker lost the remote connection since the subway that Amaya is taking to his apartment is in a tunnel. Since the hacker is in the same subway following her, he too has no connection. Matthias uses the few seconds he has without Nora C watching to reveal that the whole thing is real. He says that he has been pretending because if anyone knows or if anyone left, the hacker would kill them. His reasoning for revealing the truth is that the man following Amaya has no connection, but he already saw that there are other people capable of listening in, and the connection of these guys is still stable. So the other Sharons just saw that Matthias let everyone know that it's real, thereby breaking the rules. I think Matthias justifies this decision by thinking that the other Sharons don't care if he breaks the rules, only that Nora C can't know, which would also be wrong. He saw that Lex was killed by someone who isn't Nora. That's because he's in the subway with Amaya. And unless he can teleport, more people are in on it watching to see if the rules are broken. And here, by the way, AJ makes a pretty good point about something they should have perhaps realized earlier. Oh my god, guys, they're not just gonna let that evidence float around! Anyways, when Amaya regains her connection, they pretend to know nothing. But they're acting super suspicious. Unless the hacker is pretty stupid, he can probably guess by their shocked facial expressions that something changed. And here, even if their plan of tricking the hacker would have worked, there is still one small mistake made by Matthias. Once the hacker is back online, Matthias writes Damon a message saying, Do you think they hacked the subway? Great question, by the way. But he would only send a message like that if Damon knows the truth. And since the hacker has remote access to his screen, he saw him typing that and therefore can easily figure out that Matthias let them in on what's really going on. The other Sharons then decide to target the next person. This time it's AJ. 
They show them another video where they take a bunch of clips from his social media and create a really weird sounding message. It has him saying that he's going to, I don't know, like shoot up a mall or something? The Sharons then call the police and play this audio for them. I am sick and tired of all the corruption. I'm gonna pack up all my assault weapons and explosives, go downtown to the mall and have some fun. First of all, how anyone took that call seriously is beyond me. They may as well have taken the audio from Google Translate, that would sound just as believable. But somehow the police still came with numerous armed officers. They storm his house and AJ goes to the stairs with his hands up. The hackers then play a gun loading sound effect on his speakers, which prompts one of the officers to kill him. It is really strange that he got shot. I mean, how can a person with both hands up and nothing in them possibly hold a gun? And since the police instantly shot him, they must have been looking at him with his hands up. Do they think he's loading a shotgun with his feet? Now at the end it's revealed that the person who shot him was probably in on the game. And this would make AJ's death unavoidable. Unless Matthias would do any one of the 15 things outlined earlier. After it's clear that he's dead, Nori runs away trying to reach the police before the hackers can get to her, which is a pretty selfish move. I mean, if you run to the police to be safe, but leave your wife to be at home, isn't it obvious that they're instantly going to kill her? They already saw that the Sharons hacked into their computer, so they can probably get their location too. So Nori makes it onto the subway before the Sharons intervene. They then give Serena, Nori's fiance, a choice. She can save Nori or her mother who's lying in the hospital dying of cancer. After not choosing anyone, they both get killed and so does she. After that, Matthias runs off to a secret place where he signed Amaya to go, but he's still on the Skype call with his phone, so he's good. Damon then tells whoever's still watching that he's been screen recording the whole time and he will expose them. He then also figures out that everything they did so far was meant to happen so that the Sharons can frame them for kidnapping Erica Dunn. They moved the money and copied the videos, which makes it look like the group killed her for the bitcoins. So if they would have deleted the videos at any point, they would be safe as there wouldn't be a reason to kill them since they can't frame them for the kidnapping. Then they couldn't get away with it since they require Matthias' friends to be involved in a crime to stage their deaths. Otherwise the police will investigate and try to come after the Sharons. Matthias then gets a call from Amaya and it's revealed that the hackers sent her a fake message telling her to go to a building where they can abduct her. We then cut back to Damon and see that he's also been killed. Then there is the final act. The Sharons hold a vote on whether or not to let Matthias live. After the time is up, it gets voted that he should die. Big surprise. Seconds later, he gets hit by a van. I think it's very strange that he didn't hear it though. I assume that the van isn't electric, so you could notice the engine coming down the street. Matthias does have headphones in, but he's not listening to any music. He only had them in to stay on the Skype call, so he should be able to dodge the van and maybe even get away alive. Okay, so that's how you can beat unfriended dark web. By the way, some methods that I outlined wouldn't necessarily save anyone since it's really about not transferring the money and deleting the videos. But I just thought it would be interesting to point out their decision making process as almost all choices they make are seriously flawed. Anyways, I really hope you liked it. See you in the next one. Bye guys.